Hello. Hello. Turning my camera on for you. Okay. Hello. How's it going, guys? <laughs> yeah, it's great. Nice to see you. How are you going? Life is good. <laughs> yeah. How about uh, last uh, lunar eclipse? Yeah, it, you know, messed with my sleep a little bit, but I'm good. <laughs> yeah. How about you guys? Yeah, uh, we uh, sleep uh, a lot, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so much energy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> when uh, we, we start the channeling, Will you guys say, when, before you ask a question, will you say, this is, and then say your name? Yeah. Okay. Okay? Yes. And, um, do you have a preference for who my channel? Yeah. Who do you want me to channel? The creators. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh... I'm uh, my name is Book, and this is Ting, my friend. Yeah. Yeah. We have seen uh, see, uh, channels on the creators since uh, three years. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. So I'll, I'll go get them, and then <clears throat> once they come in and they say, we are here for you, you can just start talking to them, yeah, like, like you would anybody, and um, uh, just keep track of the time. Just give yourselves thirty minutes with them. Yeah. Okay. okay. Ready? Okay. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah. 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 the creators we are a 12th dimensional collective of non-physical beings and we are happy to assist you in whatever way that we can okay so uh, I may ask you some questions yes yes so 
Yeah, uh, actually, I uh, want, I would say thank you first for what you have uh, done in the past few years. Yes. For uh, all of us. And yeah, that helped us a lot to uh, get through all the pain and all the hardship in our life. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Yeah, and uh, I have some uh, questions. Uh, the first is, you know, like, uh, uh, actually, uh, you know, like the new world uh, we have been talking about in the past few years. Yeah, like uh, we uh, actually we have some waiting for that to come. And, you know, sometimes we uh, so first pray for that. And, you know, like, uh, if you can give us some, uh, it's sometimes, you know, like some uh, timeline, yeah, some timeline for it and some uh, instruction, like how we get there, uh, what will happen in the next few years. Well, all of that is, of course, being determined by you at this time. And none of it is set in stone. So in the current reality that you are in, we can see that you are several years off from having full open contact with extraterrestrials. And then after that, about another five years, before you complete the shift in consciousness and start living your fifth dimensional lives. Now we say, of course, that it is all up to you to determine how you are going to get there and what is going to unfold, because it is. It is entirely up to you. You are creator beings. You have that ability to make this experience whatever you want it to be, to jump to whatever timeline you want to jump to, to be a part of whatever human collective you are vibrating in harmony with. Oh. And so the best thing for you to do is to start determining for yourself what you want to create as you move forward and then vibrate in harmony with that. In other words, don't see this shift experience as any different from any other creation that you have endeavored to participate in. Okay. So, uh, but uh, what, what about like, you know, like I, I don't feel like uh, there is so many of uh, people like us, you know. So if we jump to uh, the timeline that we want, so which means uh, that is just only us that live the, the new world, and how about the other people? Yes, if you jump to a timeline with a different collective on it, or a different version of the collective on it, in that version of the collective, you would have more awakened uh, human brothers and sisters on that timeline with you. Okay. And that way, you would experience a, a easier, more joyous shift in consciousness with those individuals because there wouldn't be as many people having to do the majority of the work in a very short amount of time. Yeah. So, okay, I, I understand, but like, uh, you know, like, uh, actually, uh, in uh, Vietnam, uh, there has been uh, a revelation of uh, one of the uh, Buddhism uh, named Zen Zong. You know it? No. The Zen yeah, uh, it's like the the last uh, the last uh, teaching of the Buddha uh, when he uh, passed away. He teach that to un. Uh, 
uh, is the is not well known by uh, other people. It's like uh, just only one, and uh, it will pass through uh, many uh, generations. And uh, now it has been revealed in Vietnam, uh, in Ho Chi Minh City. And it said that uh, uh, Ho Chi Minh City is uh, some, it's called the, the Dragon uh, Land. And uh, you know, like, uh, uh, and it's, and Zhenzhong will be uh, end up in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And so, uh, many people from around the world will gather here in Vietnam to learn about Zhenzhong and uh, you know like uh, many uh, disaster will happen around the world but uh, not in Vietnam so maybe uh, like I wonder like uh, what will happen uh, if the disaster hap uh, happen around the world and what do you think about that? What I said about Zhenzong? Well, we think that you still create your reality whether you are listening to prophecies yeah. from a long time ago or prophecies that are being channeled in the current moment. In other words, different people have been predicting that the shift is going to occur in this calendar year including a couple of dates that have already passed you by the solstice that you just had on june 21st and the eclipse that just occurred yesterday yeah these were two times where people were sensing the powerful energies that were coming to earth and were using that to bring them into the belief that the major event was going to occur that would bring about the shift in consciousness. Now the major event that we are talking about is one that has been talked about a lot in recent months and that event is a gigantic wave of love. Yeah that will be sent throughout the galaxy and that will hit planet earth and the rest of the solar system and initiate rapid transformation so any time you use one of these predictions as a reason to expect that you are going to be receiving more high frequency energy and you put yourselves in an open and receptive state or if you gather together in a group and expect something big to happen because all of you are focused on the same uh, eventuality then you do help to create the reality that you want to experience but these events that are occurring are minor events in comparison to the major events so they are helping the fact that you are receiving all of these predictions and the fact that you are gathering together this helps to show the rest of the galaxy what you are ready for what you are capable of receiving and assimilating energy wise okay so okay so uh, so it actually we have a group like uh, before uh, in uh, like on the the community of the line and uh, we even have a forum you know on the internet yes and and it had gathered like about uh, 1000 people around 1000 people but like uh, at the time you know like they actually would want to create a, a community of the a new age and uh, they actually uh, did live uh, with their spirituality 
and uh, and but like uh, some uh, I don't know like something happened like some people they uh, don't uh, keep up with the path and they give up and they return to live like uh, the the way the old way yes oh, yes and then uh, and now they they just like steal the fire bus yeah me my friend and uh, three more uh, and we would like to create a community like uh, so uh, people like us can have a destination so they uh, may uh, come and meet up and uh, we talk about but like uh, and actually we have uh, uh, use our energies and the universe energies to create that uh, reality reality yes uh, to come yeah and yes. like and yeah and I, it's confusing me a lot you know well what you're replaying in the new age and spiritual realm now are a lot of the same experiences that you've undergone with religions yeah. where you once had for example a much more unified group of christians on the planet and now you have all of these different sects of Christianity that don't agree with each other and some look down on others for what they believe and so on. And you can see that same type of schism occurring in the New Age realm where you come together and you say, we all have very similar beliefs let's come together with a common purpose let's make some change in the world but then if people who gather together in that way get off topic too much if they don't remember what the original intention was for coming together in the first place or they they lose sight of it it's easy for people to get in their heads and say, well, I don't believe exactly what you believe, so we should not be a part of the same group anymore. Yeah. Or this is another way in which the predictions and the prophecies affect you is that enough people hear the promises of a new earth and a fifth dimensional reality enough times and they hear enough predictions and they see that things tend to stay pretty much the same and then they wonder if they have uh, believed in something that is false and so you're going through this process of trial and error and you're going through this recreation of what you've already experienced in religions because some people simply have a lot of trauma from having been a part of a religion or even something that you might call a cult and so as they work through those traumas in their new spiritual pursuits they can come to a place where eventually you will all be able to come together much more uh, peacefully and graciously and with much more unity consciousness. But for now, you just need to accept that the majority of the humans are not on the same page as uh, those of you who are awakened. And that even those of you who are awakened are going to have some different viewpoints that eventually you will get past. Because eventually you will all release the need to be right. And you will get out of your heads and more into your hearts. And you will come together based on the resonance of your frequencies rather than on the... 
details of your beliefs. Oh. Um, so you guys have some advice for us about uh, how to building our effective groups, our community, um, uh, in our, in, um, in those people. Yeah. Well, uh, all, all you can do is continue to be true to yourselves. And as you listen to your inner guidance and you be the truest, most authentic version of yourself that you can possibly be, then of course others who are like you are going to resonate with you and want to connect with you. But you can let it happen a bit more organically. You don't have to worry about whether or not enough people are in your group or whether you have the power in numbers that you need to make great changes on your world. You ultimately can only tend to your own garden here and do the work on yourself. By doing so, you help others. In other words, even by just working on your own spiritual growth and evolution, you are helping others because you are leading by example, you are showing others how it's done, and you are putting that information into the human collective consciousness for anyone who is ready for it. A lot of what you are also seeing there is a repeat of the time that you had on Atlantis where you were living a very similar polarized experience of Earth that you are now with a lot of technology and a lot of promise of a shift in consciousness. But it didn't work out so well for the Atlanteans and all of you who are on Earth now have a memory of a lifetime on Atlantis. Whether you were actually there yourself or whether you picked up that memory when you incarnated, it doesn't matter. It still feels like you had the experience yourself of the fall of Atlantis and the promise of Atlantis and now you're also at a time where you're hearing a lot of promises and you need to make peace with the fact that ultimately it will be up to humanity how you go about this shift and whether there are more uh, cataclysmic type events that occur before you make that leap in your uh, conscious evolution. Conscious evolutions. <clears throat> yeah, but like, uh, uh, what what timeline you see is the most uh, possible for humanity now? Well, what what we're seeing here is that in less than five years you are on the path to full open contact with extraterrestrials and a little less than 10 years for the shift in consciousness to be completed oh. but that oh. that prediction there is one that makes a lot of people feel uh, anxious or feel disappointed and want the dates to be sooner than later when these things occur. So that lights a fire under you. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you don't have to stay on this particular timeline that you're on right now. You can shift to one where you experience it all much sooner. And you can also process the anxiety and the disappointment so that you can have a much nicer ride than what you've been having. You can experience a much happier journey than what you've been experiencing. You can start to create the journey more consciously and you can also know that the more time that you have to focus on the new earth and the fifth dimension that you are creating, the better it will be when you get there. So you're consciously creating that as well. Yeah. So uh, what happened after the ship? That is going to be determined by you, but essentially there are those of you who are more awakened, of course. Yeah. There are some who are completely asleep. And after that big wave of love comes and starts transforming everyone and everything in a very big and unmistakable, undeniable way, there's going to be a need for individuals like yourselves who have been awakened for a long time, who have done the work on yourselves that you've done to clear out all of the lower frequency emotions, traumas, and thought forms. And you will be able to help those who haven't been doing the work and that have been asleep. You will be able to help them to make peace with what's happening you will be able to help them process their emotions and deal with the changes as they are occurring very rapidly, the, the feelings that come up for them about the reality being much different than it was the previous day, making that type of leap is very unsettling and can cause a lot of shock. And so those of you who are wanting to be of service and are able to be of service will spring into action to help those who are suffering a bit with it all and having a very hard time. And then eventually you will get everyone up to speed and the realities that you will be creating will be markedly different from what you've been experiencing in the fourth dimension. It won't be like uh, just a better version of what you're living now. It will be completely different. You will be able to create almost instantaneously. Eventually you will become instant manifestors. But in the beginning, you will still experience a a small time in between your creation of something and your experience of it. You will be able to create whatever you want and in no way affect what someone else is doing or experiencing. And so there will be much more freedom and independence, but you will also feel much more a part of a collective. You will feel yourself as a collective being. Oh, as a collective being. Meaning that you will know yourself as more than just an individual. Yeah, we can feel the whole way. Yes. 
So, uh, you know about the times we will meet the uh, extra exterior's contact? We say, have to... say that again about extraterrestrial contact? About uh, the time we will meet uh, in full contact with the extraterrestrials. Well, they, they are already walking amongst you. They are underneath the surface of your planet and they are in your oceans. Oh, no. So you have a lot of extraterrestrials there and that will probably be the way that you start to get more comfortable with the idea of extraterrestrials coming to you from the skies because uh, most of your science fiction stories show gigantic spaceships coming from far far away very very far away and then usually having some sort of negative impact on humanity it's the stories usually don't have a happy ending but you have fewer stories of extraterrestrials living among you and starting to reveal themselves as extraterrestrials and so that's going to be the way to help humanity come to terms with the fact that you are not alone in the universe you're not even alone in the galaxy you're not even alone on your own planet you have extraterrestrials there and so that is how we see disclosure happening is that more beings basically come out and say yes we are here we're living among you you can tell if you want to do tests on us that we are extraterrestrial and it won't lead to the widespread panic that is feared it won't have that detrimental effect that some people are afraid it will and then you will have the ships landing shortly thereafter wow. so we will live in harmony with each other that? say that again uh, so uh, after the ship landings we will have uh, to live um, in harmony with the yes. extraterrestrials yes indeed in fact all of the extraterrestrials are also shifting they are evolving they are expanding their consciousness so even the ones that you have heard about in the past and have a lot of fear-based beliefs about because of the stories that you have heard they are becoming uh, higher frequency beings okay. and so you are going to live in a harmonious galaxy with these extraterrestrial beings because there's no denying the shift from occurring and those who don't want to be a part of the shift are going to somehow exit whether through death or through the use of their technologies to go on living in another third or fourth dimensional reality but those of you who stay for the uh, grand finale are going to uh, all be living harmoniously it's going to be a very wonderful fifth dimensional galaxy that you're part of Um, you know, like uh, sometimes we uh, look up uh, to the sky and uh, we uh, we we feel like there are some uh, you know like spaceship around. Is it true? Yes, more and more and more of those sightings are going to occur, so that people can get more comfortable with oh. extraterrestrials 
with the idea of them and also because when you see a ship in the sky you're getting more than just a sighting you're also getting the energy from that ship and you're becoming more accustomed to having that energy around so it makes it easier for them to be a part of your reality when you've already attuned yourselves to their energy so like uh, you know like uh because uh, people, you know, they uh, they have uh, even when they are in the life box, I I think like they still have some dark side, right? And uh, what what if like you hand the technology to uh, yes, the, yeah, to the people who can't handle their dark side. Yes, well, you're not going to get any technology that you're not ready for and the technology is not going to be in the hands of every single person right away uh -huh. but the the technologies that can do a lot of good will be given to the people who are responsible enough to handle it in other words the extraterrestrials will have a sense of who can handle it and who cannot So, what is the most powerful uh, tools we can do to help people? Well, you can continue to work on yourselves and bring in the highest frequency energies that you possibly can into your physical body. So, the more you open yourselves up and channel energy through you, and you ground it in your physical body, you ground it into the earth, the more you make that energy available to every single human, even those who are unawakened. So just continue to follow the joy and the bliss of the pursuit of your spirituality that you are already pursuing and your presence there will be enough to help others in bigger ways than you can possibly imagine. Uh, so, like, um, you know, sometimes uh, I wonder, like, why us, you know, or why us that who uh, is awakened? You chose it. You chose to have that particular experience before you incarnated it living as a person who is still asleep is a choice that they made for themselves because it's a different experience and overall you are always seeking out experience your oversoul always wants experience over everything else That's a choice. Yes, it is a choice. So even we know it's a heart. Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. Do you know about like um? I have a read the stories like they said um, the boys uh, when they are born we uh, have received many dreams different from another world and when the pawns of awakening he has um, like uh, living uh, that that uh, one side of the body like uh, living creatures inside the bodies start to awaken again and talking to that boys like uh, two of us has feel that feelings we don't know that uh, is that us um really us are another people's in um, another lifetime living inside us well so, it's you it's always you yes occasionally you will have a uh, negative entity attachment but it's rare 
that you're going to hear from that being, that it's going to be a voice that you are perceiving. In other words, they can influence you, certainly, to a certain extent. But if you're hearing a voice, it's you talking to you, more often than not. Oh. So, like, is he, uh, like, another, another uh, part of us? Yes, another aspect of you. Uh, and you can t tell by what they are saying, whether it's a higher uh, frequency aspect of you or uh, one of your past life uh, aspects of yourself that is of a lower frequency that's seeking your help. Yes. Yeah. Have you uh, reached your uh, thirty-minute mark yet? Uh, yes, it's oh. already. Very good. Then we will bring this to a close. Okay. Yes, we have enjoyed the conversation very much. We are the creators, and we love you very much. Yeah, we love you too. <coughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> hey guys. Yeah. Yeah. Have, have you finished your beer? Beer? <laughs> yeah. Water. Water? It's oh, water. water. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Nope, still have some left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's a uh, helpful in the conversation, you know. Really helpful in the conversation with us. Yeah. So, like, uh, yeah, make, we thank you a lot for this uh, conversation, Daniel. You're welcome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Good job, guys. You asked some yeah. good questions. Yeah, well, I know. Uh, it's okay. okay. Yeah. We have questions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How do you feel after the channeling? I always feel very blissed out. Oh. oh. Yeah. So it uh, doesn't make uh, you uh, feel tired? No, the opposite. Oh, oh opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, thank you. You're welcome. You. you guys have a great day. Yeah, have a yeah. good day. Okay, Daniel. take care. Yeah. Yeah, okay. thank you. Bye now. See yeah, see you later. Okay, you later. bye. Hi everyone, this is Daniel Scranton. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share this video, and give a visit to danielscranton.com when you get a chance.